Hey, hello everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. And today I'm continuing my conversations with uh, Brother Jason Jack. And we're doing a series titled 101 uh, Verses Proving Faith Alone. Uh, we've, we've done a bunch of these already, so if you haven't seen the previous videos, you can go to my YouTube channel and find that playlist and, and watch this uh, series from the beginning. And today, uh, we're on number 22 on our list, so we'll, brother, uh, just say hi to everybody and any, any opening thoughts, and then we'll, we'll get started. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm glad that uh, uh, you can do it in spite of the extra uh, possible problems. You got rain. You got kids, but you're still going to make your best effort here. That's uh, right. I'm sure. You may have to pull the show today. <laughs> I'll do my best. All right. So today we're beginning with uh, John 8:24. KJV translation says. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. I've always loved this verse here. Uh, so what are your thoughts on it? This is uh, Jesus speaking to the Pharisees who despite his ministry and miracles and authority that he had reading scripture in front of them, they still doubted them, doubted him. And and uh, you know, early earlier on in the passage, he says that ye judge after the flesh. Um, and then right before verse twenty four, he says, "Ye are from the need, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world." So Jesus is pointed out the natural man and the spiritual man and how they are looking with natural glasses and earthly glasses and not spiritual glasses. They, they don't have the spiritual discernment because they don't have faith. Um, and then he continues that you shall die in your sins if you believe not that I am he. You shall die in your sins. So just like Acts 4.12, uh, John 14.6, which we've already discussed. This is another one of those verses where Jesus, the Son of God, God manifest in the flesh, says directly, if you don't believe on me, you will die in your sins. You're still condemned without believing in me and in the Lamb of God who was sent to give us eternal life and to die for our sins and to overcome death for us through his resurrection. And uh, so this is a this is a great go to verse when somebody will say, Well, is there another way besides Jesus? Um, this verse as well as many, many others uh, says no. Mm -hmm. Well um I I looked at the Amplified Translation and how it phrases it, and uh, I, I think it makes the, exactly the right point. Uh, it says, um, that is why I told you that you will die unforgiven, it, the insertion is, unforgiven and condemned in your, in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will die in your sins. Uh, I think that's exactly the right point to, when, to insert. Uh, if you do not believe I am he means I am the one that I've been claiming to be all along. So if you read earlier in this chapter, if you read all the entire book of John, you look at all the claims of Jesus, that he's the promised Messiah, that he's the son of God, that he came down from heaven and that he's the Savior, he's going to die for, the, uh, for their sins. All, all these claims that he made about himself, who he is and what he's come to do, uh, you, you, you've got to believe that. 
or else you're going to die in your sins. Uh, so, uh, it, really, I guess you could say they need to they need to believe uh, who he is and and uh, that uh, uh, the what is the means of salvation. You still there? Yeah. Yeah. And and you know again he says you shall die in your sin. But then if we go back earlier in John three, for instance, uh, right after John three fifteen, Jesus says that God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the Holy God, the Son of God. So, the reason that they're in their sins, they shall die in their sins, is because they're condemned already. Uh, and Jesus is there to save them through faith, belief, like you said, um, to believe that he is who he is, who he said he was in Scripture. Uh, pointed to uh, that the Pharisees read on a daily basis, but they were spiritually blind and never knew God because when God manifests in the flesh, uh, they denied it and actually uh, blasphemed uh, God and, and the Holy Spirit. When Jesus' miracles, um, they said were of the devil. And that shows you where what can happen with spiritual uh, blindness and and ultimately just a rejecting heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, it really uh, goes back to all of the, um, uh, the the claims that he's been making to the Jewish people. And, and uh, right here he's, of course, talking, I believe, to the... I haven't looked at the whole context to conclude this for sure, but I, I think he's probably talking to the uh, religious z zealots who are uh, pharisaical in, in their beliefs, and that uh, they're uh, they're just challenging everything he's he, all of his claims. Um, at one point, uh, when he says that uh, um, he's talking about uh, God being his father, and they they said we're going to stone you because you, being a man, make yourself to be God, you know, because. Uh, uh, they, they recognize that if he's if he says that uh, um, if you've seen me you've seen the Father the Father and I are one uh, and that uh, I'm the Son of God they recognize that the Son of God is equal to God uh, he, that in fact they even say that uh, they, they said you being a man make yourself equal with God because it's see my son uh, uh, he's uh, 37 years old now. But uh, from the time he was born, uh, physically, 37 years ago, uh, instantly, he was my son. And nothing can change his status of my son, but no matter if he misbehaves or disrespects me or no longer wants to associate with me. He, his status as my son always remains. So, so that doesn't change for us as, as, as believers. But the thing that's significant about Jesus uh, and being the son of God is that uh, just as my son can never change his equal status with me as a human. In other words, I'm a human, uh, I have a child, and my son is equally human. I'm no more human than him, and he's no less human than me. So if Jesus is the son of God, then he is equally God. And that's why they, were, they, they came to that conclusion. They said, you being a man, make yourself equal with God. And and uh, they, they they wanted to stone him. They wanted to stone him. Uh, I think three different times that I I, I can recall in this uh, Gospel of John. Uh, so really, I think it really does boil down to if you read the whole book of John and you see all of Jesus' claims, this is what he's telling us we've got to believe. Uh, so he's the promised Messiah that uh, we see all through the Old Testament. Uh, he is the Son of God, the Son e being equal to the Father, equally God, and that he is the propitiation for our sins. Uh, so that's what we want everybody to believe, and that's why Jesus says that we must believe. That's right. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, shall we go to the next one, or you want to say anything more about that? Uh, yeah, I think let's, uh, what's that, Drummond 4-2? Yeah. And we've already been around that verse a little bit uh, in some earlier videos, but yeah, let's go to Romans 4-2. Okay. Okay, Romans 4, 2 in the KJV says, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Okay, brother. There, there's actually a lot that, uh, a lot of references to Abraham and, uh, and his justification. But go ahead, go ahead, tell me what this verse means. Showing, and then a little bit later, David, how their faith was counted for righteousness and not any of their words, not even their effort. Um, you know, and going back a thousand, two thousand years before um, before Jesus' birth, that it's always been by faith. It's always been on believing on um, the Son of God, believing the Messiah, the Redeemer, the Deliverer to come. Um, and here, basically, Paul is just saying, you know, if with all the good works that Abraham did, and you know, offering Isaac on the on the altar, and you know, just all these things that were in obedience to God, those acts of obedience didn't save him because. If he was justified by our works, then it wouldn't pay, but not before God. And in the faith chapter in Hebrews 11, it discusses what I just alluded to with Abraham offering a sacrifice of Isaac on the altar. But it wasn't the fact that it wasn't in the faith chapter to show, you know, why he was a child of God while he was. Uh, secure, sealed believer because of his, his act of actually um, offering Isaac on the altar. It was his faith that if he did kill his son, that his son would be resurrected because he believed in God's promise, that the seed of promise would descend through him. Uh, so it's always been about faith, and this is sort of... Um, you know, this goes right into uh, the verses that we talked about a few videos ago, um, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, where it talks about, you know, him that worketh his reward, not reckon of grace, but of death, but the him that worketh not, but believeth on him to justify the ungodly, because faith is counted for righteousness. So this is just the beginning of that passage uh, that is real important for people to understand that we're justified by faith in the eyes of God. Now, we may be justified by our actions uh, in front of men, you know, and, and we should go on unto good works uh, and, and be a good witness, um, you know, and be profitable to others. But that only justifies us in the eyes of men so that our testimony may be better received. In the eyes of God, is strictly by faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, whenever we talk about uh, this uh, subject here, Abraham and his justification and uh, in God's sight, uh, well, uh, it inevitably brings up this question of uh, um, how, how are we justified before men? And I, I think that I, I've done, I do this for many years. I, I, I don't know. If you've thought about it this the way I'm going to suggest now before, or maybe you already agree with me on this, but um, if if you wanted to uh, if, see if someone was justified in your sight, what would you do if you were just met me and you wanted to kind of test me? How would you determine if I'm justified in your sight? You know that you're going to heaven. Make sure you're true on the gospel and not uh, anything that you're doing necessarily. 
Yeah. Uh, in other words, if you wanted to uh, determine kind of a, a D. James Kennedy and his class evangelism explosion, he he came up with the term uh, diagnostic questions. Uh, how can we diagnose someone's condition if they're saved or not? And um, he asked the question, uh, are you certain you'd go to heaven? And if so, why? Um, so that's how we diagnose them. And that's how we will, uh, in our sight, determine if they are justified. Uh, and But inevitably, people want to use this term that in uh, God's sight, we're justified by faith, but in man's sight, we're justified by our works. And I think it's because that's the, that's they, they are seeking some way to reconcile the problem verses in James that are telling us how, about works we needed. And so they say, well, see, uh, in, it says that in God's sight, we're justified, Abram was justified by his faith. So they, but it, doesn't, it never says that man is justified in man's sight by his works, that, that term it doesn't exist. But people people uh, um, form that conclusion and teach it be, because they, they say, well, if, it, if, it, if you're uh, justified in God's sight by your faith, uh, and then the works, and that must mean that in man's sight you're justified by works. But you just said, when I asked my que that question, you would not ask the person, well, what about your works? Tell me about your works. Uh, do, do you repent of your sins? Do you go to church all the time? How's your Bible study? How's your sin? You, did you get sin out of your life? Those are not the questions that you would ask someone so you could see if they're justified in your sight. So I've always argued against the, the mainstream that uh, uh, man is justified in God's sight by faith, and he should also be justified in our sake, uh, in our sight, the same way by their statement of faith, their their profession of faith, not by works. Their works don't prove a thing uh, to God or to us. I mean, I can tell you there's some very religious people. You look at all the Mormons that knock on people's doors and 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 uh, look at them. They got nice haircuts. They're clean cut. They try not to smoke or drink or curse. And, all these things, and you look at the people, if you judge them by their lives, they, they'll, they'll be the first to boast it. Oh, no, they they take sin very seriously. They really try not to sin at all. Um, so if if we were going to justify them by the works, we'd say, well, all these good Mormon boys, are, they must be saved there, because look at their works. Um, so uh, that's my, my point of view, and uh, I think it's important for everybody to rethink this and don't argue that in God's sight, we're justified by faith, but in man's sight, we're justified by our works, because man can't see our, uh, um, another man's heart. The only we can see are, are their works. Well, so what? I can see your works, but I'm not going to use that to justify your salvation. I'm going to justify your salvation the same way God does. What do you believe? Uh, give me your thoughts on that, please. Well, 
Uh, well, I, I can uh, uh, I can uh, sum it up very briefly, but I, I would refer everybody to uh, I have several playlists that really address this this question. And the, see, to me, um, the the one book of the Bible that um, Roman Catholics and Mormons and all the work salvationists, the one book of the Bible that they always go to is James. James is a problem book for us uh, because uh, it, it seems to say, uh, contradict what we find, what the Paul said. And so in my playlist, I have a, big, a playlist called Shocking Facts About James and Paul. And, and uh, I have another playlist called Early Church History. And, and another playlist titled uh, The Book of Acts, Verse by Verse Commentary. And when you look at all those things, my conclusion is that uh, James and we cannot reconcile what James and Paul are saying and to try to try to make it make them uh, agree. They, James and Paul did not agree, and that's why uh, uh, in the very beginning of church history, I believe James was the first book written in the New Testament, and then Paul wrote Galatians right afterwards. And, and Galatians is kind of an argument against what James was teaching in the begin the early church. They thought that following Judaism was, was a requirement in the beginning of the church. You had to practice Judaism and believe in Jesus. Um, so they thought that works were part of it in the beginning. That was a mistake in the beginning of the, ch the church that had to be kind of weeded out. And that was Paul's main mission in his all of his ministry was to, to weed that out and address that problem that you cannot continue believing in Judaism and Jesus. So you can go to my playlist uh, and to get, I've got probably 10 hours of in-depth teaching on that. So uh, if you want the longer answer, uh, but I, I just, I want everybody to just reconsider and, and may, I, I hate to hear when people uh, argue that, well, see, Abraham was justified in God's sight uh, by his faith, uh, but uh, um, we're, we're, we're justified in man's sight by our works because we cannot look into another man's heart and see what their faith is. Uh, that is horrible. I think that that is a, that's a false uh, teaching, and, and and it's a it's a it's a, the whole point of that argument is trying to defend the book of James uh, and uh, try to make it make sense. But there's another way of making it make sense, and that's understanding it was the beginning of church history when they hadn't kind of worked out all the bugs in the early church. Um, so that's all I'll say about it. You, you want to respond to that before we go on? Now I'm going to watch those videos because, you know, obviously that is um, a chapter that um, over time, or the whole book, but especially James 2 over time, has been used to teach worse faith salvation. But we know with hundreds of verses, 101, we're doing over this video series that is by faith alone and not of work, um, and, and that we know that there's no errors in the Bible. And so I think that, you know, there may be one, more than one, uh, answer or explanation to, um, make sense of James 2. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go on to the next, uh, verse, but it looks like this verse here is actually 43 verses. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. Yeah, I don't have my computer up in front of me anymore, so you'll just have to tell me where we're going. But yeah. I did look ahead, and I kind of remember there was one of, one passage that was basically the whole chapter of Acts, uh, one of those chapters of Acts. Yeah, that's what this is. It's, 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 it's the entire chapter uh, ten <laughs> of Acts. But we can All just right. sum the, we can just sum this up in our own our words here, uh, but. Uh, the point of this is that uh, Cornelius, and this kind of relates to uh, what we were talking about in the last verse here, is that this is all inter intertwined in it. Uh, before Cornelius, and I, if I'm, I don't remember my timeline exactly right, I think it was 10 years. I think it took 10 years before Peter, after Pentecost, before Peter uh, was sent to Cornelius. Uh, so for 10 years, there were no Gentiles in the church. Um, 
uh, I've got, I don't have the time I write in front of me. Um, it might have been six years or something, but uh, I don't I think it was like six years afterwards that Paul got saved. But uh, so uh, many years after the church is already up and rolling, um, Cornelius is a Gentile, but is very religious and is seeking after God. And he basically, he's a Gentile that's kind of practicing Judaism. And he's very religious and he gives to the temple and he's really generous. He does all kinds of good works. And the point that, that this chapter points out is that look at all the good works that Cornelius did, trying to be, be righteous. And yet he, he, he realized that he could not uh, earn it through all these good works. He needed some revelation from Peter. Peter had a message God wanted Peter to give him a message. And if you look at the message that Peter gave to Cornelius, um, that sermon is exactly the same sermon that Paul gave and that Peter gave uh, in his first public sermon uh, years earlier. Uh, and, and it was all based upon, uh, you know, uh, believing in Jesus. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, when Peter gives his a recount of this time with, with Cornelius and what happened when he goes to Jerusalem and has to explain himself. Because see, James and the, the Jerusalem church, they were quite angry at Peter for uh, what happened with uh, Cornelius' house. And Jews were not supposed to ever go into a, uh, a Gentile's house. And you certainly don't you have a meal with them. And you certainly don't have a Gentile meal with them. You have to eat kosher. But in Peter's vision, God gave him this vision about all this unclean food. And, and, and God said, no, don't ever consider these things unclean anymore. So that's the first indication there that God is saying these um, laws of, of Judaism, the Mosaic laws, we're going to get rid of that. And the first thing we're doing, I want you to know is don't follow the dietary laws anymore. And, um, and, and when he says nothing is unclean, uh, we could also understand that to mean that I don't think of Gentiles as unclean anymore. You can you can uh, associate with them, you can accept them as equals, and and um, tell them the good news about Jesus too. Uh, it's for uh, the gospel is for them too. So that's the revelation that Peter got, and he went when he went to uh, Cornelius. Cornelius, uh, you know, in this chapter he, it's an account of what go a good man Cornelius was, but then. He knew from this vision from God there was something lacking, and he needed Peter to tell him about it. And what was lacking was um, uh, understanding and believing that Jesus was the Savior that he needed. And uh, then when Peter gives his recount to James, and James is, uh, is uh, they're all upset, and he says, what am I going to do, follow what you say or what man says or follow what God says? How am I to argue against God? So Peter was defending himself, saying, I'm going, to do, I'm going to go and preach to the Gentiles. By the way, he was the first uh, um, apostle to the Gentiles. That's the very first message of salvation to the Gentiles was Peter and Cornelius. It was uh, years before uh, Paul uh, started his uh, evangelism. Um, so, but there's a line in there when Peter is ex explaining himself to James and the Jerusalem church, he said, and they believed on the Lord, just as we did. In other words, the exact same term that we all love to use that Paul said, what it must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Well, that same term appears earlier than, than, than Acts 16.31. It appears in this account with uh, uh, Peter explaining his actions to James and the Jerusalem church. He said, they, and he believed on the Lord and were saved just like me, just like you, just like the rest of us, by believing on the Lord Jesus. Um, so I guess the, the point of this chapter and the reason this is on, on our list of verses is, is to show that all these good works that, that Cornelius did, uh, as much as he did and as outstanding of a man as he was, uh, uh, it, it still, that couldn't save him. He, he, he really came to the conclusion what well, God revealed to him that something was missing and what was missing was was Jesus uh, all right so there what are your thoughts on all of that I could have just read the whole chapter <laughs>
spent to Cornelius, you know, and and uh, and presenting him the gospel after the vision that he had, uh, and then uh, speaking with Cornelius and understanding that he had the same vision or different vision uh, of the same event, uh, the same encounter. And oh, I find funny and just sort of looking through this chapter, um, verse 34, at 1034, where Peter begins to uh, give the gospel. And, and he starts off and says, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. <laughs> you know, so he is, he is spirit-filled. And Santa Cornelius, he's standing in front of this Gentile Yeah, I looked at these verses, and there there's several verses in this chapter that talk about how, how good uh, Cornelius was, all the good things he, he did. Um, all right, so if you're like Cornelius, uh, and you're doing all these good things in your life, you're very religious, and uh, everybody looks at you and says, well, what a good man he is. Uh, don't get uh, real on your high horse and think that you're in good shape, good standing before God, because Cornelius... Uh, came to realize uh, God gave him a vision and he, it was revealed to him that all of his goodness wasn't enough. He needed something else and, uh, and, and, and he needed Peter to tell him and Peter told him about Jesus uh, being the promised Savior who died for our sins and believe on him. Um, I also, I did... I, Jesus Christ, uh, you know, probably moments before. 
Lord's last bread, um, he received eternal life and is, you know, and is in paradise with uh, with God because of his faith. Mm -hmm. I did look at the timeline while uh, you were talking there um, uh, on on uh, Acts and. And I, I, I did confirm I was right that uh, Paul got saved roughly six years after Pentecost. So the church was up and running for six years <clears throat> and before Paul. Uh, and then uh, Cornelius, the very first Gentile, that was roughly 10 years when he got that vision from God. And then Peter got a vision and he was sent to tell um, Cornelius. And Cornelius and his family were the first Gentile believers and that was 10 years after Pentecost. So you had 10 years where uh, they had no clue that Gentiles would ever be part of this. And when it first happened, it caused a big controversy in Jerusalem. Uh, it was quite a big argument. And, and they were quite upset with, with Peter over this, as I said, or I won't repeat myself. But that's the timeline of those events. All right, should we go to the next one? Yeah, let's do another. Okay, uh, Romans... Oh, let me look at the time here. Oh, yeah, we got 30 minutes left. Yeah, we, we have, we have plenty okay. of time. What's that? I don't have my computer in front of me, so what's the next verse? It's uh, Romans 3, 27 and 28. Okay. Uh, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Yes, if I was going to pick my like top five verses uh, for evangelism, this would be on the list. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the last half of Romans 3, really, beginning at verse 20 um, through the end of the chapter, is discussing nothing but faith being the means of salvation. And, you know, this goes hand in hand with Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Um, you know, there's no boasting in faith <laughs> because there's nothing that we did is, is having faith and believing all that Christ did, what, what God did for us and receiving his sacrifice as a free gift. Um, so, I mean, this is very straightforward uh, here. And... I'm just looking just before that, um, you know, in verse 23, which we use uh, all the time in soul winning for all our sin and come short of the glory of God to show that we're sinners and need a Savior. Um, and then in that verse, being justified freely by His grace through redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And, and there was how we talk about um, He set forth uh, Jesus as a propitiation for our sins and um, and it's his righteousness that we receive, and he's the justifier. Uh, we don't justify ourselves. He's the justifier of those who believe in him. Uh, then it leads into the uh, two verses that we're discussing. Um, it's not, the, it's not the, the works of the law that we're justified, but the law of faith. And that, that ended after, you know, Paul is setting verse 28 up in this from Romans 1 you know, this sort of goes from Romans 1, Romans 2 into Romans 3 to say in verse 28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Yeah, the, uh, you've probably heard the Lordship works uh, heretics I ask us the question, where in the Bible does it say you're saved by faith alone? And the word faith alone, no, that's true. We can do a concordance check and look for the term faith alone, and we won't find it. But we, we find it, uh, we're saying that uh, in all these verses we're talking about here, the conclusion from reading the verses that is faith and no works are, are required uh, but this verse here to me is the go-to verse to say, you want a faith alone verse, verse 28 says, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. 
That's faith alone. Don't add, don't, there's no law, no works. So, uh, that is saying, I mean, you can say things, uh, the same thing uh, with a variety of words. Uh, you don't have to have exactly the same words to, to make a point. Uh, if you did, then you'd only need to, to say it one time and never have it restated anywhere else. It's just said once. And, but this principle, this doctrine of faith alone for salvation, it's repeated hundreds of times. And that's the point of this series to, to prove that. But um, uh, to, to the, the, look, if we're looking for the term faith alone, we don't find it. But if we're looking for the idea of faith alone, it's expressed right here. You, a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. That means faith alone, without any deeds of the law, any works. Uh, I also like the no boasting thing. Paul mentioned this also in a, in uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. He, he, he's reminding us uh, again here that uh, we should realize that uh, it's foolish to think we can go before God. And as Jesus said, Many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, we talked about that verse earlier. And uh, so Jesus is saying, there's going to come a time where you're going to come to me and I'm going to judge you. And, and these, some people are going to say, Lord, Lord, look at all these wonderful things I did in your name. Don't these people realize, as Jesus said and Paul is saying here, you're boasting. And you have nothing to boast about. You should you should just be humble and stop arguing with God that you're good enough and you deserve it and God owes it to you because you're so good. Instead, humble yourself and say, I don't deserve it. Nothing I've ever done qualifies me for heaven. That's why I put my faith in Jesus instead. I'm relying on Jesus. Um, so, um, I, for, I, don't know, I forgot the point I was trying to make. As a matter of fact, the, the, the verse we did uh, uh, earlier, uh, Romans 4.2, uh, it, it, they use another word that means exactly the same thing. It, it said, for if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. And the Amplified Translation says, uh, if for if Abraham was justified, was justified, that is, acquitted from the guilt of his sins by works, those things he did that were good, he has something to boast about, but not before God. So Romans 4, 2, even though the word in the KJV is glory, whether you're glorifying yourself in front of God or you're boasting in front of God, it means, it means the same thing. That don't, don't you understand? You need to realize that you have nothing to brag about to God. <laughs> you know, and if you do, uh, Jesus said that, uh, the result will be, he says to you, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Yeah, and the phrase, you know, give, give God all the glory. I wish people would truly give God all the glory when it, when it came to uh, eternal life and salvation because many people want to mix their puny righteousness with God's perfect righteousness and holiness and His glory. And, you know, if you, if you try to put your little dull flashlight in front of, you know, the brightest light you can even imagine, your little dull flashlight. 
flashlight isn't going to light it up anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. That's a good illustration. Um, all right, anything else before we go to the next verse? No. Okay. The next one is Hebrews 1, verse 3. Who, okay. who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had uh, by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Uh, I think the, the important phrase here to focus on, it says, when he had by himself purged our sins. that portion in the Amplified, it says, uh, when he himself and no other had, by offering himself on the cross as a sacrifice for sin, accomplished purification from sins and established our freedom from guilt. So, um, it's yeah. a, uh, talking I thought of something and then you uh, you made me forget it I forgot I was <laughs> that's all right I think there's an, uh, there's enough said on, on that uh, so yeah. J Jesus did it all oh yeah I know what I was gonna say the, uh, I did a, a series of videos on old hymns and um, these old hymns uh, like amazing grace and how great thou art and and uh, old rugged cross and and uh, just as I am all, all these hymns they have the most pure, uh, free grace, free gift of theology expressed in those in those hymns. They're just fantastic. If a person would sing those and, and think about what it means and then believe it, they'd be saved. But uh, it, 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 it says, uh, you know, one of them says, nothing in my hand I bring, only to the cross I cling. That's the only thing. We just... We just embrace Jesus and his work on the cross for our salvation. We don't come to him with our hands full, full with a, a list of our, 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 all of our good works. Exactly. All right. So let me see. The next one is uh, Hebrews 2, 3. All right, um, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Mm -hmm. So this is, I guess what they're looking at is the great salvation. Jesus is the Son of God in that revelation in, in Hebrews 
four and leading into Hebrews two with you know the role of Jesus in salvation as this epistle will continue, uh, with Jesus being the high priest and and um, and that, but you know, if we if we neglect this free salvation, then there's no other way. You can't do it yourself. You can't earn it. Uh, the sacrifices, uh, the Levitical system, the Levitical priesthood, the daughters washing, and everything else that have been a shadow of things to come. They were pointing to the Messiah and who he was and and his attributes. And now that great salvation has come. And you put your faith in him that he died for your sin and was buried and rose again the third day. That is your great salvation. Don't neglect that because there's no other there's no other way. Uh, I think it's, it's the point of that. Um, but man, I'll let you comment on that, but I have one more thing, which I mentioned in another video on the second half of that, which doesn't necessarily have to do with faith alone, but I think it maybe hints to when the gospel was given initially. And I, was, I don't know we, if you remember us talking about that before. I did a video where I mentioned it. Uh, but if you look at the second part of the verse, mm -hmm. uh, what your thoughts on where I may be going with that? All right, I'll go to that next. Uh, I'll finish up my thoughts on this, and then uh, we'll keep everybody in suspense a minute uh, for them for you to <laughs> reveal that to them. But regarding this verse here, I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Here it says, "How will we escape the penalty if we ignore such a great salvation?" That is the gospel, the new covenant. I think it's important to see that. Look, if, if you, um, if you're not willing to accept what we're telling you in these videos and what the scriptures say over and over and over and over again, it is, it is pitiful that, that if you, if you neglect it, if you reject it, you're not going to escape. Uh, you, you will suffer the consequences which is uh, you will be resurrected. You will go to the great white throne judgment. Uh, it will be revealed to you uh, that, look, you were offered this free gift of salvation. You never accepted it. You never received eternal life. And therefore, you're lost. And you suffer the second death in the lake of fire. That is what is waiting. That's what we hope that you will escape. It. And you, will, you escape it simply by receiving salvation, this gospel, this good news, and putting your faith in Jesus. And it says here, this I like to express this, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by the, them that heard him. So um, I think that he, Paul wrote Hebrews. Uh, there's a great uh, debate over the author of Hebrews. Uh, but I believe Hebrews is like a, a sequel uh, for Galatians. That Paul made, made made his points in Galatians, uh, and then he then he later on decided that he needed to expand on this even further, and say not only am I telling you that uh, 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 the Mosaic laws and the, the circumcision and uh, uh, you know the uh, all all the uh, uh, the the, the laws of Moses, the Judaism. Uh, but I want you to also understand that even temple worship and animal sacrifices have to be dropped. You've got to drop that. So I think Paul wrote this, and it fits perfectly. When If you see it, the way this is phrased, it says, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord. So the Lord was the first one to teach them about this uh, salvation, uh, him dying on the cross and for our sins. Uh, and was confirmed unto us. So this, the writer of this is saying it was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Well, maybe it doesn't support my position because Paul didn't need any apostles to confirm anything. Remember, he even wrote that. He says he got his uh, message directly from from Jesus. Uh, so maybe I'm uh, made a mistake in uh, concluding that. 
but it, it says, and was confirmed unto us. Uh, so the, the, the people uh, had it confirmed by the apostles, the people who are eyewitnesses to all these things. All right, go ahead. And, uh, if you want to respond to what I just said or, or go on to your, your other point, go ahead. I think it, we, we all agree that uh, uh, that's, that verse is uh, the first uh, prophetic verse about uh, uh, this uh, Jesus' uh, sacrifice for our sins and a victory uh, over death. But to me, the, we can trace it back even further in terms of seeing uh, the, uh, uh, the means of our salvation. And uh, we go back even before the fall to see it, and at the fall, that that time there is, to me, the first uh, lesson, and that is that God told Adam and Eve uh, to eat from the uh, the tree of life, and to not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And as long as they did that, uh, everything would have been been great for them. Uh, they, uh, they wouldn't have there wouldn't have been a fall. Uh, but they had free will, and then the devil told them that, uh, no, don't believe God. What I'm telling you, you need to believe this. God doesn't want you to eat from the tree of knowledge because then you'll under, know, have the knowledge of right and wrong, and you'll be like God. So 
this tells me that to me the 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 tree of the the knowledge of good and evil is representative of the law uh trying to okay uh once i understand right and wrong which is what the law tells us then i can within my own power uh do it i'm capable I'll, i'm if i know right and wrong i'll choose to do right uh and therefore i don't need god I'll, i can do it on my own and that was the big uh mistake that they made and that's the mistake that all mankind uh, makes so what they needed to do is uh they should have continued be believing uh in the tree of life and the tree of life is a picture of jesus uh on the cross uh they say that he was hung on a tree and, and uh another picture is uh uh isaac carrying the wood on his back uh to be uh sacrificed uh, but these are pictures to me going all the way back to the tree of life here's the choice the tree of life of life means you just trust god you're not going to be deceived by thinking that you you can uh be like god and and uh through your own power do good instead of evil uh uh, so to me that's that's what really the gospel is Re reject the idea that you can uh understand right and wrong and do it on your own power instead rely on god to provide it for you through the tree of life and the tree of life is jesus Amen. um i think we've gone to the hour let me see yeah we're an hour and one minute now so uh why don't we end at that verse there and take take some time now to kind of sum up your thoughts for the the study today. I think these are again, you know, very clear, um, great verses. Uh, beginning with John eight twenty four, where Jesus says, "If you believe not that I am He, you shall not understand." Uh, showing that He He is the only way. And then, you know, I think the the really big verse that really doesn't need any discussion because it's so straightforward is um, in um, Romans 3, 27 and 28, um, where we discussed about, you know, where's the boasting in, and, and um, it's by the law of faith, not by the works of the law. And, and Paul comes to the conclusion that uh, a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You see, um, you see works, law, and deed all showing uh, in those two passages, those three type of acts, works, uh, will not save you, but it is strictly by uh, faith. Um, so, no, they, these are all good verses today, but those are the ones that stick out to me. Yeah. So as we uh, continue on through this series, uh, we're going to continue showing verse after verse after verse that clearly make the point that salvation is offered to all of us. Uh, to, the Bible says whosoever. That means any person without exception. Um, uh, and it's offered as a free gift. That means you don't have to work for it by doing religious works. Uh, you don't have to pay for it by uh, contributing to churches or charity. You don't have to do anything for it. In fact, you cannot buy it or earn it. Uh, it must be received as a free gift from Jesus by faith alone in Christ alone. Now, if you will put all of your faith entirely in Jesus and, and, and what he did for you, that he died for your sins, and that that's the remedy for the problem and that that's the means of your salvation, then you're guaranteed you're, you're going to go to heaven. Uh, because uh, the Bible says God cannot lie and God cannot break a promise. And the Bible says that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. So uh, I hope you'll do this now. Um, and uh, I, I've mentioned in some of these videos, we get a little sidetracked and I refer quite often to other playlists I've made on various subjects. Now, I know that when we have a videos like these that are an hour long, that many people will see, oh, it's an hour, I don't have time for that. Or, uh, so uh, it's, it, you have to be a pretty serious Bible student to, to be willing to watch this video for an hour. Um, and I'm, and if that's you, I'm, I'm glad that you like that. I'm, I, I appreciate that you have that kind of interest. And uh, 
but to watch a playlist of you know dozens of videos on a particular subject and many hours invested in it that also requires a great commitment uh, of your time and to study something so i realize that many people are not going to go to these playlists that i'm referring you to but uh if you will uh, I, I think you'll be amazed by some of the things that will be revealed in those playlists that uh, um, very few people, uh, sadly, are teaching or understand. Uh, all right, brother, give you the last word and then we'll close. I think that the way you label each of these videos is great for to show specific person. So if somebody doesn't have an hour to watch the entire video, but they have some verses that they've been thinking about and, and want to hear what other brothers in Christ have to say. Um, they can try to, you know, say, for instance, they had um, a question on Matthew 7, 21 through 23 in our last video. You have a label where they know that's probably going to be 30 or 40 minutes into the, into the video uh, with a discussion and find it can listen to our commentary there. So... That's great that you do that because I think that there will be people uh, that listen to these videos that will use them in that fashion. Mm -hmm. All right. I hope they do. Uh, brother, thanks again. I know you're a very, very busy man, so I, I really appreciate you taking time out of your life to, to help me with this. Uh, so thanks again. I look forward uh, to next time. Uh, to the viewers, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.